For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Or maybe you had a question you wanted to first ask. Yes, thank you. Um, I've, I've watched uh, uh, most of those uh, videos you um, referenced, uh, Joe. Uh, I'm an avid uh, subscriber of Creation Research uh, YouTube. Uh, one one observation on your photos is the clear boundary between the layers. Most people don't yeah. realize that that's that's evidence in itself of quick quick layering rather than millions of years. Otherwise, you'd yeah. see erosion and so, soil deposition, etc. Absolutely. But but as as an engineer, I've done numerous structural inspections on bridges, and I've even seen stalactites on bridge under bridges. <laughs> And those bridges no. weren't there for millions of years. No. No. But but no. Uh, hey, this is a specific question on limestone formation. Mm -hmm. there, there are critics, and some of them are in the chat at the moment, who claim that um, uh, this could not have been laid in turbulent water flow. Can mm -hmm. you provide an explanation for where all the limestone came from and how it was laid? I believe John McKay... Uh, I think in our previous um, YouTube uh, presentation, as well as some conversations I had with him uh, at his uh, house, uh, mentioned limestone is really a chemical process. Yeah. So there's two there's two things to comment on it. The first one is uh, where do we get the idea from that it's a uh, shallow marine based sediment? Um, the other one is what is a different or alternative explanation to how this limestone actually formed, right? So the first thing you have to look at is, well, we get our idea of a shallow marine carbonate sort of uh, calciferous ooze, as it's called beautifully, um, from modern deposits, right? We go out and we look, we find in the real world some of these uh, sort of uh, chalky deposits at the bottom of shallow seas, which are slowly accumulating small things called coccolithophores. Coccolithophores are the sort of shells off of tiny little plankton, which they fall off, eventually clump together, sink down to the bottom of the sea floor, and begin to form this ooze. Now, this ooze builds up, and it's uh, what is claimed to end up producing the limestone deposits. So it's forming around us today, right? Uh, but the argument is it happens so incredibly slowly that, uh, and it really does form at the rates that we, or, you know, uh, very, very slow rates, like one inch per thousand years or whatever. It forms at extremely slow rates. And they say, well, therefore chalk and limestone, which has its base in this sort of uh, ooze that we see forming today, must have taken millions of years to form. Well, there's a very simple way of disproving that and showing that you can't actually correlate the two, and that is to ask this. Number one, how many fossils are there buried in this uh, califerous ooze or this modern day limestone or chalk? The answer, absolutely none, because it is not being laid down fast enough to produce fossils. Um, number two, are there any creatures being trapped in it that are not being destroyed pretty quickly? The answer, no, it happens very, very quickly. The creatures, anything that lives around it uh, just gets destroyed and dies. OK, question three, um, is the uh, ooze that is being formed today in a pure form? 
Because you see, when we go to the White Cliffs of Dover, it is pure chalk. There's no contamination. There's no sediment or muck or, you know, rotting stuff caught up in it. It's brilliantly preserved and it's pure. Well, no, in modern day ooze uh, scenarios, uh, it's full of sediment and sand and fish poo and scales and all sorts of gross gunge, right? Now, if you want to argue that the present is the key to the past, which is, by the way, where the whole idea of millions of years actually came from, but that's a completely different uh, topic. Charles Lyell, who promoted the idea that the present is the key to the past, that we have to use modern day observations to explain past geological events. Well, that's how you get to the assumption that chalk has to form slowly and limestone has to form slowly. You go and look at modern day deposits and you see that they're forming slowly today. Therefore, that's how it always happened. Of course, the problem is you can't actually compare the two because they are so different. Because one forming today doesn't have fossils. It doesn't have even have fossils forming. Fossils get destroyed or creatures get destroyed as soon as they fall in. It's thoroughly contaminated with muck and gunge and ooze and, you know, disgusting stuff. Whereas when you go and look at the, uh, you know, the rock, the limestone, the chalk, they're majority pure. They are full of fossils. They're all full of fossils which are pointing the same way, which indicates turbidity currents and flow. They are full of fossils which are turned upside down and are uh, lying on their back, which uh, shows that they've been transported. They're not in a life position. So, Clearly something doesn't match up between what we observe today and what we actually see in the rock record, right? Now you can't just ignore the fossils and say, well, we know that limestone is a slow gradual deposition, therefore that's how it must have happened, right? There needs to be an alternative explanation. There needs to be a way of actually addressing how you can actually get these rock deposits full of fossils. And by the way, two inches is a pretty small fossil compared to some of the things you can dig about the chalk cliffs. I mean, I've seen ammonite fossils, the curly whirly ones, uh, nearly two meters across. Um, that's uh, getting on for six feet uh, or just or over six feet across, right? Some of these things are absolutely enormous. Okay, what's an alternative explanation then? Well, John Mackay, I believe, is, as you say, touched on it. I watched his interview that you did with him, and there certainly seems to be much more of a chemical process involved, uh, something which most geologists have never actually considered, because most geologists are taught from day one that limestone is a very slow deposition they never think to question that and also because in science you are taught to specialize you specialize on one particular aspect and you never really go outside of your academic field um, i want to give you an example of this uh both myself and john have noticed that there are extremely important connections between microbes bacteria plankton you know little sort of multicellular oh sorry a yeah, single cellular uh, microscopic creatures enzymes chemical processes and limestone formation, whether that's limestone like the carbonif carboniferous limestone, whether that's limestone um, like the uh, chalk, or whether it's limestone like the stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, and this is starting to reach the scientific papers, right? So we thought we need to do some investigation. Um, we're both geologists. We come from a geology background. We know wonderful stuff about geology, but what we don't know too much about is organic chemistry, which is where this chemical process comes in. And a few people have touched on it. So we went and sat down with a world expert in organic chemistry who said to us, I've never thought of looking at it that way before, and I wish I knew more about this, but I'm not a geologist. And so for the first time ever, a geologist and an organic chemist sat down and actually started to work together, right? <laughs> so yeah. um, you, will, you will never find the correct answer to anything unless you ask the correct questions. Just blindly going, well, we know that it's a shallow marine deposit, therefore I'm not going to ask the question, how did we get fossils? Uh, is not, it just simply doesn't work. Okay. Is there a way that we can explain it rapidly happening um, using a Noah's flood-like scenario? Well, this comes on to a different point, and I'll just briefly comment on to it. First of all, we know that the Hunstanton formation, we know that the chalk formation, we know that the limestone formations had to be buried quickly because they're full of fossils. The fossils all indicate flow. They all indicate rapid burial. Okay, how are we taught from day one that uh, rock formations are formed? The answer is from the bottom to the top. The bottom layer got there first, and the next layer settled on top, and the next layer, then the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer, and so on and so forth. And there you get your wonderful geologic column from bottom to top um, with the label of millions of years. First proposed by a creationist, by the way, um, Nicholas Stino.
The problem is everything we see in the world around us shows that rock layers don't form bottom to top. They form sideways. Because if you need to get sediment uh, to actually form a deposit, you need to erode that sediment from somewhere, you need to carry that sediment from somewhere, and you need to have moving sediment in order to deposit. All of that requires water which is flowing sideways, carrying that slurry of uh, stuff in it. Think about a beach, think about tides, think about rivers, think about deltas. Okay, scale that up, and you've got the perfect explanation for a stationary but moving sideways, so the particles are all suspended, moving at the same speed, carrying the limestone and the chalk along and depositing it as it's going, burying the creatures which are also traveling in the one direction. Now, there's a lot more research to do about that. There's a lot more research to do into the chemical aspect of limestone. Um, but simply saying we know it's a slow, gradual deposition doesn't work. The fossils go to show that. Uh, and if you want to try and match it up to any slow, gradual process, that is worlds away from anything that we see um, in the real world. Well, they, well, they have they have observed um, limestone uh, during volcanic eruptions as well, Joe. But mm -hmm. um, but going back to the limestone and the fossils, there are fossils that are found in limestone layers. And if we marry that up with that um, one to three centimetre per thousand year deposition rate, you find it's clearly impossible because there's a video on YouTube where they show a dead carcass of a whale. It was scav uh, uh, scavenged um, within a year, I think. Uh, they came back a year later. They, they even found the worms were eating the bones. Yeah. I think that was a know. David Attenborough Blue Planet type, type of thing, wasn't it? Um, I think I know which one you're, you're talking about. And it, show, it shows you a year later and it's just it's just destroyed. Yeah. Um, there, there's, there's no, I mean, there's no way you can get it. If you want to get, especially with that level of preservation, um, where, you know, you have to bury a fossil quickly, deeply without oxygen. If it's going to be a slow, gradual process is even if you're talking 28,000, um, years, just to bury the thing, not fossilize it, just to bury it. You just, you're never going to get a fossil. It's a ludicrous result. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the, I, I know a lot about the process. I mean, there's also, um, fossilization in amber as well uh that's i guess a different form of fossilization we find different creatures fossilized in amber than we do say in the in the uh, sedimentary layers uh across the world but uh standing standing you've got a question there yeah i've got about uh 300 of them so uh, Joe, i hope <laughs> you've got time for about 10 hours of, of interview i'm just kidding 